Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, so let's pretend you had an engine built somewhere some time ago and you put some miles on that engine and now you have it in another shop. That shop tears down that engine and when they do they maybe you had an oil consumption problem or some other issue. When they tear that engine down they analyze your piston rings very closely and they see that all your piston ring gaps are lined up. The first thing that shop does is say to you, hey the guy that built your engine must have been an idiot because look all your piston rings are lined up and that's the reason that you have an oil consumption problem or smoke or carbon buildup on your piston. That other shop that built it made a mistake. They must be an idiot. The truth of the matter is, the fellow that's building your engine the second time probably doesn't know as much as he thinks he does. So stay tuned to this video and I'm going to tell you why. There's probably some fan noise in the background and I'm just going to tell you guys that, sorry, you'll have to deal with it. So many parts of the country right now are in the middle of the heat wave. It's 10, 15 degrees above normal here, and I think yesterday it was about 94 degrees in the shop, despite having fans blowing like crazy doors opening and everything, but I digress. Hope you can hear me well enough. I have a standing rule in my shop. If a fellow brings me a bike, it's been this way since the very beginning for two decades. If you bring me a bike that's been worked on by others and you have a problem, I never want to know who worked on it before. And I tell every customer that. For those of you that have been customers, you know I've told you the same thing. I don't care who worked on your bike before. And there's one very distinct reason and a story that I could tell you, uh, but I'll reserve that for another day, I think, unless you guys leave comments and tell me to tell the story. It's about five to seven minutes long. If you leave a comment, and tell me to tell the story, I'll tell it in another video. Regardless, I've always had a standing rule. Don't ever tell me who worked on your bike before because I've always felt that my responsibility was to the customer standing in front of me to always be honest with him. And I want to be able to have the freedom to explain to that customer any deficiency I may find in repairing a bike without ever being able to be accused of speaking ill of another shop. Unfortunately, that does run rampant in our industry. Some, for whatever reason, feel they need to degrade other shops in order to promote their own. Uh, not only is that short-sighted character, I feel that it's very unprofessional. So I follow with that same rule. All of that being said, I've seen videos, I've had customers call, I've had other you know, other shops reach out to me and everything else, and they send me pictures of pistons with the piston ring uh, gaps lined up. And, and it's, you know, it's this is this guy's problem, and the builder must not have known what he was doing. He didn't align the rings right when he built the engine. And this is the reason for the guy's problem. The fact of the matter is, that's simply not true. So I'll let you in on a little secret here. All right, piston rings rotate during normal operation. They are supposed to, they are designed to. That is exactly what is supposed to happen. When you look at the crosshatch, it, it varies crosshatch patterns, frequency, angles, and also the, the coarseness, RA, RMS finish. I don't want to get too technical in these videos. But different types of rings, different bore sizes and things like that require different finishes when it comes to honing the cylinder. Based on those finishes and those crosshatch patterns, they are designed to not only retain oil to provide lubrication for the skirt during operation, to not retain too much oil, to, which would promote oil consumption of course, but the angle of those cross hatches actually promote rotation of a piston ring under normal operation. One of the things that will happen during normal operation for an engine that tends to idle quite a bit, the gaps of your piston rings tend to line up 
if an engine spends more time idling than it does under normal operation. So an engine that idles a lot, you know, heavy traffic, things like that, the ring gaps tend to line up a little more. The other is, again, that crosshatch pattern, the rings will rotate under operation depending on that pattern, that typical 45 degree, 44 and a half degree crosshatch pattern that's there, rings will rotate. If they don't rotate, you would have significant wear patterns in the cylinders that followed the ring gap. So let me show you guys to, before I, I go further with more technical explanation, let me show you an incredibly complex tool that I put together, I don't know, almost 20 years ago uh, that assists me when I assemble an engine and then we'll go further. Ain't that something, a piece of cardboard? So uh, literally, uh, almost 20 years ago, I took this piece of cardboard and I drew a piston on it. Obviously, you can see I drew the angles here and I have noted, and I'm gonna give you guys a second so you might be able to make one for yourself. Uh, the wrist pin is here. I make note here of front of engine, and then you'll notice in the red, that would be for front piston and rear piston. And literally, what I do with this piece of cardboard is I lay the piston on top of it in this orientation. And I will make sure that it's facing front of engine. You have to pay attention because you could have offset wrist pins that this matters and things like that. And, uh, but anyway, I lay the piston on this piece of cardboard and then I follow these marks, boom, 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 boom. And I know each mark is exactly 90 degrees between each, opposing gaps, etc. And then I mark it on top of the piston. Now, to protect this little piece of cardboard that i got to tell you, I've had for oh God, almost two decades, I slide it into a Ziploc bag. That way, in case I slip with my permanent marker before I mark the pistons, all I need to do is replace my Ziploc bag. As you can tell, this one's getting hard to read through. So I, uh, I do that on every engine, and again, I mark the ring orientation. So why do I go through this process if rings rotate anyway? Here's the reality. That initial 20 to 30, maybe 40 miles of break-in, that very first part is hypercritical to the overall lifespan of the engine. I want to offset those gaps to hold that combustion pressure in above the piston forcing those rings out to take advantage of the almost uh, file-like attributes of a crosshatch in a cylinder and really file those rings down so that they break in well and seal against the cylinder wall. Beyond that point, in all honesty, ring gap doesn't really make that much of a difference because the rings are going to rotate inside the cylinder anyway. So the, uh, during idle, ring gaps tend to line up during idle. The other way that you would see that your ring gaps are lined up during disassembly of an engine, sometimes that can be an indication of a, I don't wanna say a low spot, maybe I should say a high spot in the bore of the cylinder. So if you have one spot of the cylinder that's a little bigger than it should be, typically, if a cylinder is not prepared properly, the ring gaps will line up with the four studs of the cylinder because that tends to create a, a, a shape like this in the cylinder wall. And ring gaps tend to follow a shape like this, let's call it an egg shape, and they'll line up. So if a person was diligent during their disassembly and they noticed all the rings lined up in an area, that's a great indication that they should probably take that cylinder, put it in a torque plate, and run a dial bore gauge down it. Most of the time, they are going to find that that cylinder is shaped like this, and wherever the rings are lined up is going to be a spot in that cylinder that is a little larger than it should be. And that's why all the rings follow. Now. The next thing, 
there's a lot of science that goes into piston rings. And part of that is part of, like this is one of our custom pistons for a 117, our Super Duty pistons. There are a lot of very specific measurements that go into the science of piston rings and gaps and things like that. Uh, it's temperature, it's the alloy that the piston utilizes and how much it could grow under certain temperature. Uh, it could be your cylinder, the uh, alloy that's utilized for the casting of the cylinder itself, the material that is utilized for your liner. Maybe it doesn't have a liner, maybe it is a nicosil type cylinder, uh, but regardless, rings need to have a radial wall clearance uh, from the ring to the piston. There is also uh, a gap that needs to be maintained between the piston and the groove itself to facilitate rotation of that piston ring. You want it to rotate inside the cylinder. So it, if it didn't, what would happen over time is everywhere you had a, a you know, a 15, 16, 18, 20, 22 thousandths gap in that ring, it would wear a high spot in that cylinder wall and if it got bad enough eventually it would break a ring or chip it etc. So all of that being said rings are supposed to supposed rotate on a piston relative to the honing pattern that is in the cylinder it's supposed to work that way. Sometimes when your engine is tore down maybe your engine idled for a while before it was tore down, or maybe it's just chance and odds that your grooves were lined up when that engine was tore down. And the reason I say all of this is that if a shop has torn your engine down and they immediately look at your piston rings and say the grooves are lined up and they blame the previous shop that worked on your engine, that when they assembled it, they didn't align your rings properly. The reality is that isn't true. So I don't want people to think bad of previous shops if they find that situation because that's what's supposed to happen. It is normal. It is common. And to a large degree, you can assemble an engine and put the piston ring grooves wherever the heck you want them to be because they are going to rotate and move around. I choose, as well as many piston manufacturers choose, to recommend to their customers that you still align ring gaps in a particular pattern. The reason that is done is during that critical break-in stage to preserve as much ring seal as possible until the rings have time to wear into the cylinder that combustion pressure, taking as much advantage of it as you can to seal those rings against the cylinder wall to maximize the potential of your engine. Now, the reality of it is, every little corner that's cut, a ring that is not gapped and clocked properly, any tiny mistake that could potentially be made, cleanliness, all of those things, during that first critical 20 to 30 miles of an engine break-in, it will rob you of health of your engine that you will never get back. Once the rings attempt to seal, once that pattern, that crosshatch pattern has kind of been filed and smoothed against the ring, the coatings have been worn and things like that, you have a limited amount of time to break that engine in. Once you exceed that point of abrasiveness, your ring seal ha is the best it will ever be. So, by telling you guys all of this, I'm not trying to tell you that clocking your ring gaps is irrelevant and unimportant when you're assembling your engine. It's critically important because you want to take advantage of those first few miles of engine break-in to maximize the potential of your ring seal, thereby improving cylinder fill percentage, reducing blow-by, maximizing cylinder pressures to get the most out of your engine. If you don't do that, then invariably you will compromise ring seal, promote oil consumption, and reduce cylinder pressures that you will never get back. The other side of it is uh, don't be so quick to badmouth the shop that worked on your bike before. It could just simply be that your bike was idled for a little while before it was shut down and before it was disassembled. Those ring gaps just simply by chance may be lined up. 
The best advice I could give you, if you have an oil consumption problem or you're questioning maybe the power output for your engine and you've decided to tear the thing down, before you tear it down, do a leak down and a cylinder pressure test. That will give you the overall health of the engine and maybe give you some more clues of what repairs need to be made as you build that engine back up. So guys, thanks a lot for watching as always. I thought I would give you a midweek, uh, and I'm gonna wipe the sweat off my face. Uh, well, I dropped my rag. So guys, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I, I wanted to give a, a quick update on our fundraiser for the All Kids Bike Program. Uh, we've raised a little over $4,100 at this point. So I've been in the evenings kind of preparing that panel for paint. And at some point in the evenings, I'm gonna be producing a video uh, showing the how to paint deal. And uh, we're gonna be painting that panel as part of the fundraiser. And remember every $25 raffle ticket that you buy, uh, gives you one chance to win this one-of-a-kind panel that I'm going to be painting. I'm going to leave a link below uh, so you guys could click on that and make a donation if you are inspired to do so. It's a, The All Kids Bike Program is a wonderful scholastic program for kids and uh, definitely in this, uh, in this county here it's something that they have uh, an enormous need for. I also want to say thanks to everyone for all of your comments subscribers you know only about uh only about uh 35 percent of the people that view the videos actually subscribe if you subscribe and hit the reminder bell you're going to get a reminder for every video i publish and there's some pretty good content i think uh and uh the other is i want to say a big thanks to the members uh for you guys continuously supporting the channel every month uh it means a lot to me heartfelt thanks to you and of course to all customers who have bikes in this place I'm running wide open and we are finally getting bikes out of here and it's uh, it's a wonderful thing so again guys thank you very much I hope you have a wonderful week and uh, I think uh, my next video will be involving painting that panel for that all kids bike program take care of yourselves and each other have a good one